Commander Adams was a seasoned battle-hardened warrior. There was not much he hadn't seen on the battlefield in all of his years of service. But this would change. On a route human patrol in a scout mastership, wasn't the strongest vessel this side of human space, but it was nimble and fast, just what you need to zip in and out of alien enemies' territories. Commander Adams was the only one holding back these damn aliens, with his hit-and-run tactics and stern composure to get the job done. The humans had been locked in a stalemate with the aliens, and the commander and his crew held them back with strategic strikes to the alien supply depots and crucial shipbuilding factories, had haltered the aliens in their tracks, unable to advance into human space. It almost seemed that a retreat was in order, but that was not an option. The queen demanded her generals to see her at once for an emergence meeting. She demanded that they figure out how to stop the lone human ship, Surely with our more advanced technology, they should not pose any more of a threat than a green crew sack, a local bug that often was squashed easily by young ones. Is there anyone here who would like to explain why we are stalled in my advancements into human-controlled space? She bellowed in a loud but clear voice. The generals turned to each other with claws on their chins rubbing nervously. One of the generals stepped forward with a hesitating motion. Yes, General Kozbinkiak. What do you have to say? Kozbinkiak paused for a moment before answering. I have a new suggestion if the queen will permit me to speak freely. Go on. This better be a good plan, she sighed. The general finally spoke. I have recently been conducting intel gathering methods and may have gained a winning play to finally beat this lone ship once and for all. Do tell, the queen answered with half interest. The general approached the queen in motion to only tell her, My queen, all I can say at the moment is that it's very old valuable key information, and I will fix this human problem for you. The queen rolled her long blinking eyes. Very well do as you must. But be warned, any failure will be met with demotion and credit cuts. She and her personal guards left. Humans. With a crew of six, this ship was nicknamed the Ghost by alien forces, taunting and slipping through so-called tight defenses. The race of aliens they battled were called Garthtrix. These prideful aliens are a mix of reptilians and apes and new, they could easily take the light scout ship but could never lock on to it and unleash hell. Commander Adams had never told the crew, but he secretly knew why they could not lock on to the ship's energy signatures. It was because it was so old and patched up that it went undetected by alien scanners until after it had left the area. This frustrated the alien general Kozbinkiak to boiling point. He was under heavy pressure from the Queen to put an end to this stubborn, lone human ship. Every time he had to make a report to the Queen, he would try and leave out any incidents involved the scout ship dubbed the Ghost, as the Queen threatened to demote him and put him on a cleaning crew in the wastelands. He grew more inclined to use the information gathered from the human prisoners, which made him not sure if the information was correct, and if the humans' prisoners had been lying, out of options, he deployed the new mission to begin to get all the information out the prisoners, a part which he hadn't told the Queen about, as she thought he had already gathered the intel and it would ensure a victory. Commander Adams chuckled at the thought of the alien general getting punished. He could never understand the language that they spoke, but could certain read the face, and it wasn't looking good. The alien general finally needed a win, and came up with a plan that involved an old ancient human tactic that he had picked up from the endless mind torture of humans the aliens captured. The plan involved basic physics, knowing the speed and quick nimble movements with the ship's stats was to hyper jump directly in the path of the ship with shields at full power. This would ensure a victory for the alien general and get the queen off his back. The stage was set all he needed now was to plant some juicy intel on a moon near the border of human-controlled space, a playground for Commander Adams and his Ghost Scout ship. 
Commander Adams had received a urgent message form, High Council Command, which read, One of our mining outposts near Quadrant 5 Alpha has been attacked, but somehow there were no deaths or injuries, but a victory claiming a light drone scout from the aliens. Commander Adams smiled at the crew, which looked worried that is was a trap. The scout ship dropped out of hyperspace and the commander ordered, do a barrel roll hard, left now. The scout ship did this with ease and at that moment the alien ship landed right at the spot the human ship had been. The quick movements of the human scout ship had created a gravity wake which acted like a crushing vacuum that would chew you up and spit you out and the alien vessel was caught right in it and was flung directly into the path of a huge solid titanium asteroid and blew up on impact as the shields of the alien vessel was disabled by the gravity wake. The crew with mouths wide open could not believe what they had just seen as they slowly regained focus, asking the commander, how the heck did you know that was going to happen, sir? The commander with a smug look on his face, hands on his hips answered, well, you see, I am much older than I look and I wrote the book on ancient human warfare tactics, the same intel the prisoners would have gave up unwillingly. The crew looked at each other in astonishment. Commander Adams and his crew knew this was only a small but well-deserved victory and continued their patrols like nothing had happened, as you do in times of greatness, because this foe wasn't done with them yet. Commander Adams relayed the victory to the High Council Command, while resupplying at a distant outpost. The Council also had some good news for the crew. Apparently, another race of aliens had been watching this battle for some time and that last move that the Ghost Scout ship had done impressed them, and they wanted to join the humans in the fight to push back these space bullies. The news of General Kozbinkiak finally reached the Queen, and his death seemed quite stupid to her, only because it didn't make any sense, and pondered how that was even possible, the final end to the message rang in her ears for some time, humanity fuck yeah. As Commander Adams and his crew aboard the now famous ghost ship, headed out once more to push back these aliens with the aid of newfound allies, one thing was clear that no lizard-like aliens were going to enjoy our earthly blue gem as a holiday retreat, which in an intercepted alien message report for the Queen from this fraction of reptilians, according to the race helping the humans, this Queen has a particular invested interest in ruling the Quadrant 9, which read as follows. My Queen Kikatis, we have new news on the race that joined the humans, the ones called the Watches, who we thought was already extinct 200,000 cycles ago, and the cedars of many planets. These are the ones who killed your father in the battle for System Quadrant 9, 40 light years from here. We await your reply with orders on how to use the weapon, you know, the secret one. Oh, and a side note, some of the generals were wondering about tonight's Space Jam concert and if it's still on because most of the invasion is on autopilot and is doing well, except for the one who we don't dare name. Actually, we don't know his name, still working on that. But the rest is like a dream on easy mode, gaining back some territories in the North Quadrant, encryption protocols level 5 enable. No silly humans or their help can break that. Send back details soon. In transmission, Commander Adams smirked after hearing this translated intercepted message, thanks to the newly retrofitted tech that the new friends have given to us to help win the fight. Very useful intel, one of the crew said with excitement to the commander, which he replied, Yes, the huge ego on these aliens is a wonder to behold. Now we know that those AI androids are on autopilot. This is going to be our ticket out of this war. With that said, the commander knew that something more lurked in the depths of the reptilian arsenal. What could this weapon be? They seem to have a lot of confidants just to have androids doing most of the raiding on human outposts. Back on the Queen's home world after taking leave from the front line, leaving the somewhat capable General Trivenac in charge, since there was a stale mate with the battle and needed to regenerate, 
She stirred tirelessly in the chambers of the headquarters, as this was meant to be an easy victory over these, tin-can low-life backward space trash, pondering over the General Kosbinkiak's weird and strange death. Her thoughts were conflicting. How could something like that even happen? Then a flash of a memory when she was a young hatchling only about 50 years old, the average lifespan of these reptile ape species with 90% reptilian and only 10% ape, due to some past cross-contamination of DNA, which the origins was unknown, was roughly 1,200 human years and the queen was approaching 800, gazing out her window overlooking her world 2,000 light-years from Earth, which was only a short trip in the average reptilian ship. It had everything a queen reptile could want, yet a feeling of unease washed over her from the loss of the ancient territories her father once held. The memory of her childhood flashed again into her mind, while sitting in an relaxing pose practiced for as long as the race had been around, that let healing and memories to flow easily into the body. She remembered the last time she had seen her father before that fateful battle with the Watches, a by-nine race of turtle-like beings that should have just got out of our way. But no, they had to dig in like a bastard and make it impossible to gain any advancements to win the battle her father had fought in. And at that moment, she remembered the last transmission her father had sent back to the overseers, which said, I can't believe what I am seeing. A lone small vessel off my starboard bow, it appears to be helping the watchers. Wait. What how the hell did he get there? That is impossible. Who are these beings? Brace, brace front shields to full power, all available power. Now engineering. Oh my green gizzards, it's a damn gravity wake. How did he do that? It's such an old little ship, but unbelievably fast. Why is the wave expanding out like ripples over the fleet? Then the transmission went silent. The queen snapped back out of the trance with a jolt, regaining focus. She had a lingering feeling about the lone human ship. And what was it doing all those cycles ago on the battlefield helping the Watchers? More questions arose than any definitive answers. The holopad in her chamber sprang to life and a recognizable face appeared, General Trivenac with a somewhat pleased grin on his face. We await your reply with orders on how to use the weapon. You know the secret one. Oh, and on a side note, some of the generals were wondering about tonight's Space Jam concert. And if it's still on, because most of the invasion is on autopilot and is doing well, except for the one who we don't dare name, actually we don't know his name. Still working on that, but the rest is like a dream on easy mode. Gaining back some territories in the North Quadrant, encryption protocols level 5 enable, no silly humans or their help can break that. Send back details soon. In transmission. Well, that sounds a little better than when I left, she thought with a slight smirk about the Space Jam concert. We will have to be doing a lot better than that to get any time off for concert or any other leisure activities. I think my generals have been battling with these humans far too long, picking up foolish habits. Commander Adams and his crew had a new mission, very well suited for the ghost. The High Command Council contacted the commander and relayed a urgent mission briefing. A new voice came across the comms, one the commander hadn't heard before. You're new here, have we met before, said the commander. A quite but clear voice replied, No, I am Counselor Credtoss. I took over after the great Malachi retired. We need to catch up after this mission. You have been out on the front line for over a year now. Commander Adams thought for a minute had it really been that long turning to the crew, which were all nodding in agreement. Well... Someone's got to keep these pesky aliens at bay. Yes, the work you and your crew do out there is nothing sort of marvelous, but we need you to come in after the mission for a full debrief. Things have changed, and we might even get a tour of that speedy ship of yours. His voice sounded slightly strained. The commander, hesitant to answer, clicked the comms button. Sure, she is not too much to look at, but has a special bond with us and is the fastest ship in this side of the universe, proudly said Adams. 
Well, that's nice. I've sent through the mission report, get in and out, then return to the council headquarters, waveringly said the counselor. Over and out, Commander Adams huffed, then turned to the crew and said, Damn suit wearing pencil neck turd nuts. I don't like this guy. There is something up with him. The crew nodded, and the first, Officer Jack said, Me either, but would be nice to see home for a bit. The commander shrugged, as he could do this in his sleep and didn't care much for shore leave. Apparently, one of the watcher's light carriers had crashed onto a nearby moon after sustaining heavy damage from the reptilian's barrage. The humans were happy for the alien's race assistance. But something was clear, that even with their high-tech capabilities, most of it was in the areas of communications and shield technology, no real heavy weapons or war tactics. This is maybe why the Watchers never interfere in battles or waited so long to help the humans. Commander Adams smiled with amusement, thinking this would be a good time to bring out the old ancient book and teach these space turtles how to fight back and learn some new karate moves. They fight like a rat or something like that had taught them, and they seemed to have a real hunger for pizza, which was strange. The ancient human book on warfare tactics seemed almost as old as the commander and the scout ship, something he must at all costs keep to himself. The Queen Kikardos was sitting in her chambers, thinking of a reply to General Trivenac Holo message. But before she could reply, thoughts of the lone human vessel entered her mind, taunting and distracting her from any other thoughts. This has to stop. I am a queen. I cannot be rattled this easily. I will not be a prisoner of that human vessel. I must and will get to the bottom of this matter. Her first move was to summon the records keeper, a old weathered reptilian male, with magnificent flowing robes of wonder that made him stand out and the keeper of all things that needed recording and maybe a bit of nonsense too. The queen hissed at her personnel guards to fetch him at once. The guards, somewhat hesitant to rush out of the chambers, were met with a sharp stare from the queen. Move, don't just stand there. Fetch the keeper at once, the guards answered with, Permission to speak, my queen. Oh, if you must, what is it? She hissed with a frowning face. The keeper of records can only be summoned with the approval of the overseers, the trembling guards remarked. The queen began to realize this was true, and it somehow had slipped her mind. The memories of her father and that human vessel had clouded her thinking. Very well, begin the process of gathering the overseers. The overseers, a bunch of old lords and governors appointed to keep the balance of power with the queen, one of the reasons she wanted to leave them out of the request. The guards this time moved out with gusto and determination in their steps, as if they will be greatly rewarded or something. Little did they know that no such reward awaited them, but still they had pride in their duties that the job to serve was enough. Now that I have a moment to myself, I better send a reply to these somewhat needy generals. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news in regards to the Space Jam concert. This is no way on my green skin that anyone will be taking a break or having ships on autopilot, clean up your game, General Trivenac, and lock in, or I will have you dragged back here in front of the overseers and demoted on the matter of the lone human ship. Find me a name, and fast, as I am doing secret research here and have sent for the keeper of records. Try and stay off the long-range comms as we don't know yet the full extent of these watchers' capabilities, enabling level 5 encryption in transmission. With that done, the queen felt a little better, but still knew what awaited her at the meeting with the overseers, as they have been for some time trying to introduce a home world different from the rest of the fractions that littered the universe in the way of removing a queen, acting as a commander and having any power or influence over any invasion plans, including decisions on the distribution of wealth amongst the reptilian citizens. One governor in particular named Slonkak, a very old member of the overseers, 
Rumored to be the oldest known living reptilian on the home world, some say, he worked on many top-secret research projects, including life extension. He was the main backer for this new change in policies. Meanwhile in human-controlled space, Commander Adams and his crew on the trusty ghost ship had a mission to complete to get these friendly aliens out of a jam. The commander, using the scout ship's capabilities, was at the helm, with steady composure moved into position above the wrecked watcher ship, which was more intact than expected, truly remarkable. Due to their shield technology, which acted like a turtle shell, cocooning the crew inside from the impact and damage, the commander knew time was of the essence and had put up a listening post drone in orbit around the moon to detect any approaching reptilian vessels. He was keen to get this mission done and dusted and report back to the High Council Command, hopefully getting all the boring stuff out of the way in and out. I don't trust this new guy running the show. He sounded way too keen for a personal tour of my ship. I better concentrate on the mission at hand. Okay, crew, where are we at with lowering a rescue tether to these space turtles? He said with a slight smirk to his first officer, Jack. Almost have contact, sir. Communications keep your eyes and ears peeled. We don't want those sneaky bastards surprising us in the middle of this rescue, firmly stated Commander Adams. Nothing yet, sir, all clear on all frequencies. The ship stats were looking good, leaning over to pick up the ancient book on warfare tactics from his command chair, quickly flicked to the page on rescues. I know I am going to be needing this in a few minutes. As the watchers were lifted aboard the ship, the commander did a quick head count. Twelve Eve got? Everyone else count the same? Yes, sir, answered the crew with a relieved sigh. How many were on your crew? Um... What should I call you guys, watchers? The commander said with slight confusion in his eyes. A older watcher moved forward from the group. These beings somewhat resembled normal household pond-type earth turtles, yet with more human-type features, and walked upright with no real visible shell on the back, but more of a hump. He spoke, Thank you for the rescue, my name is Tulrix, and I am the captain of that rumble of a mess down there, all crew accounted for. That is the most the reptilians have attacked us before. Most times they give up after wasting all their power on, trying to bust through our shields. Commander Adams paused for a moment processing what the Watcher had just said to him. Yes, those slippery lizard bastards don't hold back under the orders of that queen they serve. She seems different to the others. The reason why they attack so hard is because of the fully automated androids on autopilot are actually doing better than the reptilian generals who all have gone to a big space concert staying away and taking all the credit for victories. Just as the commander said that, Sir, two hostiles inbound, range 2,000 k aims, and closing fast. Thanks to the orbital drone's long-range scanners, gave the crew vital minutes to prepare. Commander Adams had a smile on his face, which the crew was already used to after serving with him for over a year now. The stunned watchers were thinking he was mad, to think they had any chance of getting out alive. The two reptilian vessels of a light carrier size armored with everything that the reptilians could think to put on a ship, from rail guns, Trisham warhead missiles, Space flamethrowers, stun bombs, sonic weapons, high energizer lasers approached the moon's location, expecting to engage right away. But the area was clear, except a small drone in orbit. One of the vessel gave the order to retrieve the drone, while keeping a lookout on the scanners for any energy signatures on all frequencies, as they were well aware of this lone human ship named the Ghost could appear at any minute. As the first ship brought the drone aboard, they quickly searched and scanned for any usable data, for the Queen had been searching for a name, something anything would be of great value. Distracted by this mission, the second ship scanned the area, with a quick click on the comms to the first ship. Anything on that drone we can use? All clear out here? Just a moon and gas giant, 
and those annoying iron asteroids giving us some glitched readouts. Other than that, all good. The first ship failed to reply as they waited listening to the crackling comms from the interference. For any response, a dread started to rise in the crew of reptilians, and before the general could hit the comms button again, a huge explosion erupted from the location of the first ship. The alarms bellowed on the second ship, warning of the fallout of the explosion heading their way. With a quick movement, they only sustained minor damage before they could regain focus or bearings. A rippling effect headed straight at them. The origin seemed be coming from the iron asteroids next to the gas giant before the could hyperjump. The engines went offline and all power went down on the ship. Sitting there exposed and awaiting the end, a beeping sound echoed through the ship. It was the backup system comms. The reptilian general nervously clicked the button. Hello there, friends. How are we doing today? Now that I have your attention, I have a message for your queen. End this invasion or ill will bring the fight to her home world. Oh, and how was the Spam Jam concert? Maybe you should have stayed there and let AI pilots do your job. Before the reptilian general could respond, the human ship loaded up the engines and hyper jumped back to human controlled space. The leader of the Watchers, Tolrix, had a surprised look on his face. Commander Adams, with a smile, said, How did you like that? Tolrix pondered for a bit. That is what we need to learn. The drone with a hidden bomb inside was great. Hiding in the asteroid field was neat. Glad you liked. The commander chuckled. The Watchers seemed taken back by what they had seen. The Watchers leader asked if they could get something to eat. Sure. What do you space turt? Um, I mean Watchers like to eat. Commander Adams quickly correcting himself. Well, you can call us space turtles if you want, but we prefer Watchers. Since we met you humans, we have developed a taste for something called pizza. The crew and commander nearly fell out of their chairs in laughter. I have just the spot back on Earth I think you will enjoy. The human ship plotted a course for Earth and directions to a place called Mr. Cosmic Pizza Place. Back on the reptilian home world, Queen Kikadis was awaiting the gathering of the overseers. She lurked and paced with a worrying expression on her face, up and down the length of her chambers nibbling on some locally cooked food called Gallenbeni, a local bird that was like human food very similar to roasted chicken with green beans and gravy and boiled eggs. This dish offered little relief from the weight of meeting with the overseers, in particular Governor Slongkak, a real mover and shaker despite his age and tomb-like movements he looked like a reanimated corpse. The queen was beginning to think that the rumors might be true about his age. The implications of that claim could demote the governor as any technology, hidden and not shared with all members of the overseers, was an offense. With the immediate demotion and made an outcast, sent to a distance moon, never to return, this would get the queen back in the game. All she needed now was some solid evidence. Her mind came alive with the thought of her generals working on the intel gathering about the lone human ship. As she continued to pace back and forth with anxious steps, her two personal guards watched, hoping for something to happen so that she would snap out of the trance she was in. Looking at each other, the guards, with unspoken words, began to take a step forward before they could even motion. The queen's head snapped to the side with a glare that could crack an asteroid, with a bellowing voice said, No moving. You are royal guards with the highest discipline. I don't need any distractions while I am in my Zen think tank mode. At the exact moment, the holopad console blinked with a calming light of good news. Well, the queen had hoped that's what was on the other end of the call. It was her average general, Trivenac, with somewhat of a downward stare. Lift your head and explain what's going on. She huffed with a snort. The general slowly lifted his head. My queen don't get angry. We did as you asked. After your message, we immediately left the Space Jam concert and took the invasion fleet off autopilot and searched for the human ship named the Ghost. 
We did better than out best, but the ship was somehow everywhere at once and had tactics like no other. Oh, and we have a name. The general paused as if awaiting a good ear bashing from the queen, but nothing, just silence. My queen, he nervously said, the queen using all of her meditation techniques, just to keep calm, replied, a name general, now speak it. I need it for the meeting with the overseers. This is not a time for delays. General Trivenac spoke with a somewhat relieved tone in his voice, as the queen was not upset at the blunder with the ghost ship. This was great, thought the general. All she wants is a name. I haven't even told her about his message yet. Commander Adams, and he said to back off the invasion into human space, or he will bring one to our home world, he said proudly. The queen pondered for a minute. I have not heard of that human name before, and if he thinks that scares me, he has not met a queen like me. I am hopeful the records keeper can shed light on the matter. That will be all for now. Oh, and on the failures to do your job correctly. I will be cutting your pay credit by a quarter, and that is because I am in a good mood. You're lucky it's not half. I hope that Space Jam concert was worth it. The queen, with this newfound intel, was more than ready to face the overseers. What it exactly meant, she was unsure. But it will rustle a few scales at the meeting. Commander Adams and the crew with the watchers disembarked the vessel and headed into the cosmic pizza place. The manager of the establishment approached the commander. Hello, commander. I see you have brought friends, your usual spot. Yes, and bring the special order number 12, and keep them coming. We have some hungry watchers here. Commander Adams smiling at the manager and hoped he didn't mention the old hit show from 2,000 years ago in ancient human times, as he was a fan as well. Right away, any drinks with that? The commander hadn't asked the watchers what they drank and had no idea. With a quick ask of their leader Tulrix, what do you guys drink? The leader put his hand to his chin, thinking for a moment. What is that stuff you humans have that is a little bitter with a frothy white head on it? Tulrix shrugged, wondering if the humans had understood. Oh, you mean Brewski's nice choice. I will bring them out shortly. Happily spoke the manager, the crew, and Commander Adams, sparking up small talk with the watchers, got an interesting answer to the question about the reptilian queen and how long they had been watching humans. Well, you see, out lifespans are similar to that of the reptilians, 1,200 humans' years, and have a common ancestor back trillions of cycles ago. On the matter of this queen giving us trouble out there in the borders, we may have some juicy intel on the one you call Counselor Kredos. Oh, that annoying bastard he took over from the late Malachi. The commander barely controlling himself from a rant and spraying the watcher's leader with spit. Sorry, Tulrix. I get a bit worked up over that guy and I haven't even met him yet. Apologize, Commander Adams. No trouble at all, young human. And your judgment might be well placed after I tell you about a communications intercept. My bosses are keeping tight and lips about. Not even a word could leave of Tolric's mouth as the doors burst open to the cosmic pizza place. Commander Adams quickly put his hand on his side arm laser as the rest of the crew and watchers went on the defense mode slightly crouching towards the table. Other customers looked startled, thinking, what's the leader of the human council doing here? Well, what do we have here? I see you disobeyed my direct orders and didn't report to me after your little rescue stunt. The leader of the watchers went to speak, but the commander motioned that he will deal with this knucklehead. Well, you see, after another one of our successful missions on the borders, rescuing our new allies and bringing them back safe and sound without any losses, we decided to treat our friends to some food, and they are loving it. That was before you turned up the commander, looking back at the smiling watchers and crew. I see you're also quick with your words, not often a trait found in marines or heroes, and I am guessing that the famous ghost ship parked in the dock. I was thinking of something more magnificent. Well, if it is helping, with the invasion, I guess it could pass for a vessel. 
The council smirked at the commander before anyone could react. The leader of the watchers darted across the room in a fast haze and had council cred toss in a headlock. The commander was stunned, thinking to himself, I thought turtles were slow, drawing his sidearm to help Tolrix with the situation. Tolrix still grappling, the counselor said, You are all fools to have this human as a leader, mainly speaking to the shocked humans in the cosmic pizza place as he looked to his left, Backup had arrived, 200-plus city guards. Last time on, the one human ship, Commander Adams and his crew with the Watchers, had themselves stuck in a bit of a sticky situation. With the backup from the city guards of over 200, there wasn't much Commander Adams and the crew could do. The commander, with a deep feeling of hopelessness, surrendered his weapon and signal to the captain of the Watchers, Tolricks, to let Counselor Credtoss go, with a grudgingly shove he complied. The Counselor gasping for air and trying to regain his composure must have come as a shock to him, having a seemingly slow old turtle, able to move that fast and be agile, which had caught everyone by surprise. Commander Adams chuckled at the sight of the Counselor's face, one of surprise and dread he eventually spoke, after finding his voice, which a croak hoarse sound, compliments of the toll ricks, what the heck was that? You're lucky I don't have you shot on sight for that, being our allies, which might come under review after these latest developments, croaked the counselor. He ordered the guards to restrain the crew and the watchers, but to leave toll ricks and Commander Adams to him, after being fully restrained, of course, he was not taking any more chances with these two. The rest of the cosmic pizza place was cleared out and two guards were placed out front to keep any nosy civilians back. The commander's crew and the rest of the watchers were taken off to be processed and detained. Counselor Credtoss straightened his now damaged uniform. Thanks to Tallrix, I see you two have formed some kind of bond. I will be sending the dry cleaning bill to the watchers. It ain't cheap either, is drinks and pizza. All it takes to make alliances with aliens these days. I might have to add that to the council meeting for future reference, smirked the counselor. Well, you see, I know why you have us alone in this place right now, and it's got nothing to do with drinks, pizza, or dry cleaning, said Commander Adams with a serious tone, not wanting to entertaining the counselor's lack of humor and smart remarks. Oh, go on. I am listening with suspense and wonderment of the revelations you have come to. The commander assessed the situation, thinking in which order he could shock the counselor with the secret he had been keeping for so long about the origins of the one scout ship and how old he really was. What do you know of the Queen Reptilian Kiktardos and the Overseers on the homeworld? The counselor paused for a moment to digest what the commander had just said to him, then replied with, just that she is very productive and has pushed the furthest into our space in over 700 years. Um, the overseers, you say? Nope, haven't heard of them before. Trying to hide his nervous twitch and deep swallow from the commander, well, the overseers are the gathering of all the governors and lords from across the homeworld and pretty much run the show. Well, they would like to, except for a stubborn queen in their way and would deploy any tactics possible, leaving no scenarios to chance. The commander clearly and directly spoke, as if to rattle the counselor Cred Toss's composure, to reveal any changes in body language, confirming his suspicions. That's quite an interesting speech you have about the reptilians. You seem to know quite a bit about them, like a prisoner or spy would know, have you been spending time on the homeworld with the governor or something? Well, it wouldn't be the third option. That would be truly disturbing. Maybe I will include that in my address to the council. It would make for a captivating story. At your trial, Tolrix was getting impatient with the counselor's waffling and just wanted to snap his neck. Easy there, Tolrix. You might get the opportunity sometime soon, tell that cocky bastard about the encrypted communications the Watchers picked up on between the Reptilians and the Counselor's office. Counselor Credtoss began laughing. 
You think that will hold any weight at the trial? Don't bother repeating it. I will let the commander know myself. You see, I was approached by the Queen of the Reptilians for a meeting to discuss the terms of our surrender before you and your ghost ship starting messing things up. At that time, the great leader Malachi was old and stubborn and needed to go. Once that was done, I could easily slip in and out of human space with no trace. I don't know how it happened, but the Queen took a liking to me, so I led her on, pretending to return the affection. At this moment, the commander and Tolrix began to make distasteful sounds. Not like that, he bellowed. I never let it get that far. Gee, you guys are gross. That version I will tell to the council, that it was you, Commander Adams, a traitor spy that was sleeping with the enemy, and she was letting you win on the battlefield. Sounds good to me, and I will make it stick. Before the commander could yell in retaliation. Oh, and... Governor Slongkak said he would like his experimental ship back. Me and him are working on overthrowing the Queen. Once I had been introduced to the overseers on the home world, I could see the potential for myself and agreed with the overseers to get rid of the Queen. They were intrigued by a human being this ruthless. By the way, how old are you, Commander? The counselor inquired but with a quick calculation already knew the answer.